For Groundhog Day this year, my 13-year-old and I traveled 750 miles north to see Punxsutawney Phil predict the weather. Friends and family have asked me at least one of two questions. First, was it worth it? And second, how did you do it? So in today's video, I'm going to answer both. Three, two, one. So here's the quick backstory on how we ended up in Punxsutawney for Groundhog Day in 2023, 750 miles from home. Last year, my daughter and I were watching the movie Groundhog Day on Groundhog Day, and I said, I wonder if they really filmed the movie in Punxsutawney. A quick Google search later, and we learned that it wasn't actually filmed there. But the research had piqued our interest enough that we joked about going to see the real Phil one day. That one day would end up being exactly one year later. Since most of you probably just want to know if the trip was worth it, and only a few of you want to know the details of how to do it, I'll just go ahead and answer whether or not it was worth it. Yes. For us, it was totally worth it, and I don't regret a single moment of it. And no, I probably will never do it again. It was a very unique, once-in-a-lifetime bucket list type of experience, and I loved getting to experience it with my 13-year-old daughter. The memories will be cherished, but I probably won't choose to endure the early morning freezing cold, standing in the snow, crammed in a huge crowd for hours ever again. Why? Well, because we've already done it. Would I recommend it though? Yes, absolutely. We loved it. I have Addy with me at the Atlanta airport. We are on our way on an exciting trip. We planned this last Groundhog Day. Anyway, here we are, flying to Pen... <laughs> Shoot! Flying to Punxsutawney. It's a hard word to say and spell. For those of you that want to know what the experience was like and what you need to know to do it for yourself, stick around. I'm smart enough to know that you can't just show up to something this unique and expect everything to go perfectly. So I did my homework and started planning the trip fairly early. The original plan was to drive, which is what everyone we had met there had done, but 12 hours each way in the car seemed like a lot. So we cashed in some sky miles and flew up from Atlanta to Pittsburgh the day before. We landed around lunchtime, picked up the rental car and drove almost two hours from Pittsburgh to Punxsutawney. We walked the main street, got some hot chocolate, cupcakes and souvenirs. We are downtown Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. We've got our warm drinks because it's so cold outside. Uh, we're catching the souvenir shop and everything right before it uh, closes. We're gonna check out Gobbler's Knob. Addy, any comments? Downtown Punxsutawney isn't actually where Phil makes his prediction on Groundhog Day. That happens up the hill about two miles away at a historic site called Gobbler's Knob. We drove up there to check things out and get a feel for how big it was, where the bathrooms were, etc. Seeing the space before the crowds would arrive the next day was totally worth it. This is cool. This whole place should be full of people tomorrow. Totally full of people tomorrow. Back in Punxsutawney, we got some dinner at a local spot, then drove 45 minutes to our hotel in Indiana, Pennsylvania. We booked our hotel three months in advance and a 45 minute drive was about as close as we could get to Punxsutawney. I've heard that the only bed and breakfast in town sells out years in advance for Groundhog Day. We settled into the hotel, ate our Groundhog Day cupcakes in bed and watched the movie before calling it a night pretty early because our alarm was set for 3.30 a.m. Gates open at Gobbler's Knob at like 2 a.m. Unless you purchase a parking pass, which is super limited, you need to catch a bus from one of three locations downtown Punxsutawney and ride it the few miles up to Gobbler's Knob. If you're brave enough to walk, you can, but it was 14 degrees and 4.30 in the morning, so we opted for the bus. It's $5 per person, uh, you can only buy tickets the day of, and they only accept cash. We were on site at Gobbler's Knob around 5 a.m., which meant we had about two and a half hours until Phil's appearance and the weather prediction. The reason we got there two and a half hours earlier was to hopefully get a good spot where we could see and hear everything from the stage. The folks that had been there for two hours even before us had front row spots, but it was so cold that I do not regret getting there when we did. There were no seats uh, and you're not allowed to bring a chair, so you have to factor in how long you're willing to stand in the snow versus how good of a spot you want. I wouldn't want to arrive any earlier than 5 a.m. for a decent spot, but it was definitely a long two hours of waiting because of the cold. 
They had food trucks, a souvenir shop, porta potties, and a big bonfire. So if you had multiple people, you could hold down your spot in front of the stage uh, and theoretically go do some of those things. There was some sort of VIP ticket that you could have purchased, which they were sold out of when I checked three months in advance, but that got you access to a tent that I'm guessing was like a VIP lounge that you could warm up in. The whole time we were there, they tried to keep everyone entertained from the stage with local bands, the governor made an appearance, Miss Pennsylvania stopped by, some rowdy MCs tried to keep everyone entertained, etc. At 6.30, they turned off the lights and did a fireworks show to some John Williams tunes and they did their best to keep us entertained with some music and introductions of people until Phil finally made his appearance at 7.22 a.m. It was a long drawn out thing, but he finally selected the scroll for the president of Phil's inner circle to read. And we found out that there was going to be six more weeks of winter. It's six more weeks of winter weather. <laughs> the crowd groaned. And then just like when Delta Airlines calls zone two for boarding, everyone shuffled in a massive crowd to be the first ones to the exit. I heard a guy from stage say that if you wanted to stay and get your picture with Phil, you could, but the masses were all fleeing to the buses so fast that I couldn't tell how many people actually stayed behind for that. Loading the buses was the hardest part of the entire experience. Four unorganized lines to four bus loading zones. We waited in that crowd for about 45 minutes to leave and we're on the bus at 8.10. They make a loop to the three different places where you can park, so no matter what bus you get on, you'll eventually end up at your car. There is a party going on downtown Punxsutawney with all kinds of food, music, vendors, etc. And although it would have probably been worth it to hang around, the cold had taken over our bodies and we needed to get warm and eat some real food. We drove back to the hotel and ate a huge breakfast while we thawed out. So a few things we learned. One, make your plans early. Hotel, parking pass, VIP tickets, etc. all seem to sell out early. Two, we went on a weekday and it was really busy but we heard that when Groundhog Day is on a weekend, it gets even crazier, so yikes. Three, we enjoyed the town of Punxsutawney the day before Groundhog Day, while it was pretty calm and not so early in the day. Four, scouting out Gobbler's Knob the day before also gave us some confidence before dealing with the crowds the day of. And finally, the most fun we had wasn't actually at Gobbler's Knob. It was the trip getting there, talking to people who had come from all over, just like us, and exploring Punxsutawney. That was the most fun, to be honest. If you decide to go and this video was a catalyst that helped you make that decision, please let me know. How cool would it be to know that not only was our trip worth the experience, but that sharing this info helped inform your decision on whether or not to go as well. Enjoy those six more weeks of winter.